Dear Mr. President, on my birthday, instead of rock and roll, I decided to do something just as useful, and I chose to spend my time recording this letter for you. But first, before I go on, I really would like to start with rock and roll. A song that I wrote back in 1972. It's called Love at First Sight. Here we go. Looking back, I still recall what I did. Meeting you and wanting you like a kid. Watching you across the room in that way. Meeting you and wondering what to say. Hoping you would care for me, love me too. Tried to make you understand I loved you. I hope you like my song, Mr. President. Anyway, I'm a 68-year-old music man from Istanbul, and I have been closely following the changes on our planet. There have been amazing achievements and advances in technology, but the spiritual and moral pace, instead of keeping up with these wonderful developments, went 180 degrees in the opposite direction, and we now find ourselves in this giant mess. If the current world situation is not the apocalypse, then what is it? I'm not a politician, nor do I perform a civil duty, but I feel deeply responsible for this global mess, and I feel a deep shame being a member of this human race. It's embarrassing, Mr. President. If we cannot reverse this process, then we really don't deserve to be on the planet. In fact, the decision to be on it or not is very quickly slipping out from our hands. Mother Nature has started to see all of us as her enemy, regardless of our nationality, color, or religion. The effect of all the natural forces, droughts, floods, tornadoes, tsunamis are getting worse day by day, caused by our insatiable greed and appetite for power and money, a lack of trust in one another, and a lack of respect for any moral values. When I look at the global mess on a macro level, 
I see two primitive and traditional behaviors which are the sources of these problems, and only if we can change these may we have a chance to save ourselves and our planet before it's too late. Should have met you long before It's too late now, that's for sure Try to understand its fate We've just met a lot too late Please don't hang your head and cry Hard to understand but try Do you want me to pretend Just to hurt you in the end Don't make it hard Don't look that way Try to believe The words I say I'm going to For your sake Don't offer me What I can take Could have loved a girl like you Years ago when love was new But believe me, babe, it's true It's too late now to love you Like to stay with you, it's true Such an easy thing to do But you'd be the one to pay Wishing we'd not met one day Don't make it hard Don't look that way Try to believe The words I say I'm going to leave It's for your sake Don't offer me What I can take Could I love a girl like you? Years ago when love was new But believe me, baby, it's true It's too late now to love you Too late for this affair, but hopefully not for us yet. I was just pointing out the two main issues calling the global mess. The first one is the famous motto, liberty, egality, fraternity, or in fact the lack of it. These values that came out first from England in the Magna Carta in 1215 and later from the French Revolution are on the lips of politicians since 1789 without anybody really meaning it. They have no wish nor the intention of seeing the citizens of countries and continents other than their own as the beneficiaries of these values. Is this a civilized behavior that we can be proud of? I know very well what politicians will say to this. They have been saying it for centuries. One cannot risk being gullible and naive by trusting the citizens and the leaders of other countries. One always has to be stronger and more menacing in order to preserve one's own security. Well, okay, that's a nice idea. And it may have worked well in the past, but it doesn't anymore, does it? This lack of universal morality is a major cause why over the years the world finally became an extremely unhappy and inhospitable place both physically and morally. Einstein, accepted by everyone for having a far more superior brain than all of us put together, made this among many other important statements. The world is a dangerous place to live, 
not because of the people who are bad, but because of the people who don't do anything about it. Even children start to realize that in this world, all the responsible leaders don't mean what they say at all. Is this not the biggest danger for us humans? People around the world have started to think maybe life is not worth living and fighting for these noble values, values that people once thought were the most valid reason for our survival. People started realizing that in today's world, those values have become little more than myths. How can people live like this? Can humans live without moral values? Of course not. The most important endeavor is the striving for morality in our actions. Our inner balance and even our very existence depend on it. More and more, this lack of morality on a national and an international level made some of the people on the planet very sick and if we cannot reverse the current situation, it will drive all the people sick, insane and out of control. Personally, I think we are halfway there. And those who get sick, as we have started to witness frequently, regardless of their nationality, color, religion or education, feeling worthless anyway, will become murderers, suicide bombers and everything else sad and nasty in all parts of the world. In an American university, a street protest in Turkey, in a rock concert in Paris, a school in Pakistan, a bus in London, an underground station in Moscow, or even in one of the most peaceful countries, Norway. Poor souls turning to evil for themselves and for others. Evil smile, evil heart Should have known it from the start Evil words, evil ways Don't believe a thing she says Picks me up, puts me down To stay around Broke my heart, made me cry Now I'm sitting wondering why Couldn't stay in one place Yes, I really always knew Why died which didn't know You would leave me, you would go Cast your spell went away Left me lonely, you will die And of course, the world media, generally speaking, is quick to misinform the public, creating false enemies. 
Today's world situation would make even the coolest ancient Greek philosophers lose their sanity. The current dead end leads in an accelerated way to the total destruction of our civilization and only fools would fail to detect and accept this. Since you volunteered to be chosen as the leader of your country, it's up to you to own up to the responsibilities for the future of the planet and to do something about it when this terrifying picture is so clear. In order to change this mad, primitive, traditional behavior, you should go and convince your power base to make a choice between immediate change or inevitable total destruction. All yesterday's scenarios need to be scrapped and new ones written. If for one reason or another you feel that you are not successful in getting full support, I think you should resign immediately and let someone else try. We really have no time left. To change or not to change? This is the question.
second issue causing the global mess is the effing market capitalism. F for free market capitalism. For years, writers, economists, philosophers, business people, artists, scientists, poets, physicists, and just a few politicians, all decent people of our time warned us non-stop that this new world order and this version of monster capitalism was wrong and the world was going to hit the wall sooner or later. Again, one doesn't need a brain like Einstein to accept and foresee that the constant unlimited growth that the majority of the world's economy is based on is impossible to sustain since everything from raw materials to the air we breathe is limited. So, the effect of this murderous growth of the global free market capitalist system started to be felt very strongly through the rapid and destructive climate changes and the growing global economic uncertainty. All of this fueled by single cell-like behavior. The equation, or better say, the vicious circle of more production, more raw material, more people, more babies, more people, more sales, more buildings, more dangerous weather, more conflicts, more pollution, more sad people should be halted. A decade ago, even just a few years ago, it would have been difficult to make the hundreds of richest companies or families who are in control of most of the world's events understand the need for rapid change. But I feel that unless they have a serious mental insufficiency, they will now have to accept the urgent necessity of a significant change in the global economic system. Humans used Einstein's ideas and findings to make a world a worse place. Now it's time to remind ourselves what he really meant and use his ideas to make a world not just a better place, but a great place where we can finally and forever all be proud of our intellect. He always advocated, peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. Helmut Kohl, a great politician that we recently lost, said, peace must be more than the absence of war. Are you living in a tower in the country of the blind? Is it true I'll never reach you, that I'll never touch your mind? Am I still a stranger to you, someone you have never seen? One more cut out paper figure one more image on the screen Wake up to reality Leave your dreams behind Come down from your tower In the country of the blind Wake up to reality Leave your dreams behind Come down from your tower in the country of the blind I'm still waiting, can't you see me? Try to reach out, take my hand Let me lead you from your tower Far away from this blind land Don't be frightened of the daylight Leave your shadow world behind You can't spend your whole life living In the castles of your mind Wake up to reality Leave your dreams behind Come down from your tower in the country of the blind Wake up to reality, leave your dreams behind Come down from your tower in the country of the blind Wake up to reality, leave your dreams behind Come down from your tower in the country of the blind Wake up to reality 
Leave your dreams behind Come down from your tower in the country of the blind Over Christmas, I watched the last night of the proms on BBC from the Royal Albert Hall with music written by Peter Maxwell Davis, Wagner, Liszt, Bartok, and momentarily I felt very happy and proud, privileged to be a part of such an incredibly high level of beauty and sophistication with fantastic sound, music and vision. At the same time, I couldn't stop thinking about the poor souls driving away from their homes because of the wars that they didn't start and they don't understand, with the hope of reaching a reasonable existence in the West, men, women and children losing their lives at the hands of profit-making immoral gangs. Dead children's bodies keep hitting the shores of the Mediterranean and Aegean seas, not different from herds of zebra crossing a dangerous river on the way to the south of Africa, as Professor Duan Kuban pointed out, one of the lowest points in human morality. While I'm writing to you by the window, watching the terrible rush hour traffic jam towards the Istanbul Bosphorus Bridge, I'm listening to Paul Simon. He's singing, Now I sit by my window when I wash the cars. A line from his wonderful work of art, still crazy after all these years. The primitive view contradicts and clashes with the exceptional beauty of the song. Millions of people around the world, in order to take some food home, go miserably and angrily forward and backward every day and every night, wasting their precious time and life in the traffic jams on the highly polluted roads and highways. This is not less uncivilized, less immoral and less sad than children's bodies washing up on the beach. The world power base has to own up to the unarguable need for a total change in our lifestyle and start organizing the tools of the global change or witness the total destruction of our planet and all the life on it, including themselves. Humanity needs a new world to move on to a truly civilized age. That's why there is so much dissatisfaction and anger towards establishing around the world today. Can politicians achieve this? I don't know. But even if our planet wasn't in peril, we should be doing this for ourselves, to challenge and own our human intellect. Einstein didn't trust the politicians, and thought that the only way to achieve peace and wisdom was to form an upper club or a world parliament. Recently, another great mind, Stephen Hawking, said that if a world government is not formed, the human life on the planet would terminate. I think that's a great idea of forming a world parliament made of scientists, artists and philosophers, all losers to the traditional establishment. The world has tried the winners who led us all in this big mess. Now it's time to try the losers. They can't make things worse. They are very different. We are very different, you and me I've heard people say so, even you agree Our ideas are different, not the same We don't have the same goal, don't have the same aim When I say let's stay here, hear you sigh how our time should be spent, don't see eye to eye Sometimes think I'll leave you, say goodbye If I said I didn't, it would be a lie Peace. 
stay together Very strange Though I know you feel too That you'd like a change And one thing in common Clear to see All that really matters I like you, you like me I have been talking to my equally worried friends about forming such a world parliament, a social responsibility group working with the whole world community for the well-being of all creatures on the planet, human and other. It would be a really wonderful move if we could make this happen. It would soften international relations in order to achieve the final goal, a happy, prosperous, just, decent global system for everyone and everything on our planet, and of course, Liberty, egality, fraternity for the whole universe. I finish my mail with a joke that sums up the world we live in today very well. A man fell from the 100-story building, and when he was passing the 50th floor, somebody saw him and shouted, Hey, how is it going? He replies smiling, So far, so good. I'm not that man, and that's why I'm writing and trying to do something in order that we may still catch him in the air. That man is all of us. I'm not saying anything that you haven't heard before. I just tried explaining those issues in my own words and style. This is almost the end of my letter, Mr. President. After all I said and sung, I'm leaving you with my last song, darling. Darling, let me try to prove that Please come hear me Oh, can't you see? I will be glad having you around And that's enough for me Rainy days are in the past And everything is bright You and I will be together We'll both be alright Look into my eyes now, baby And try to see This was to be my last song, but I have one more as a bonus. Unfortunately, not written by myself. I wish I had. This great song is written by Maggie Ryder and friends and sung originally by John Farnham. I think it's a perfect way to conclude my letter. 
God bless the world and good luck, Mr. President. You become our voice, Mr. President. You are the voice. We want to